Welcome to EVO 10 ECU Flash Training Part 6. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at our mass airflow and speed density style calculations that are going on in our EVO 10 ECUs. Now, we briefly touched on this in the very first video in the training course. We're going to take a little bit more in-depth look at what is going on here and what we need to know so that when we're doing our calibration process, such as changing our intake size, we're going to know exactly how to program things so that our load calculations are going to line up properly and all the fuel and spark timing calculations are going to be performed properly. So without further wait, let's jump in this video so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at the differences between a mass airflow and speed density style tuning that we have in our EVO 10 ECUs. Now this is important to understand because we have the ability to tune either a mass airflow or speed density based or allow the ECU to run a hybrid between both this is going to be a little bit different than EVO 7, 8, and 9 applications. Mitsubishi designed those to be a primarily a mass airflow based equipped vehicle. So they have a mass airflow sensor. They actually had a MAP sensor that was used for barometric reference pressure. So it needed to reference wherever you're at in barrel pressure based on a one bar MAP sensor. Those could be switched over to full speed density using custom code in a Tefer V7 ROM, which we cover in that training course. Now the EVO 10s are different. They're going to be a hybrid between math and speed density as we're going to find here and talk about in the video and it's important to understand the differences of why uh, we might want to use one or the other for tuning or just keep it into this hybrid mode where it can switch one between one or the other depending on um, how the calculations are going to go so first and foremost i have opened the top here a 2010 usdm evo mr file and if we look down here under the current ram metadata if we go down here and we move into our section uh, under fuel we're going to find that we have our tables to deal with and tables to talk about here. So we're going to have our math tables and our map tables. So this is our mass airflow tuning. This is our speed density map based tuning map pressure. So manifold air pressure. Now I do want to point out that the Evo 10 has a factory three bar map sensor, meaning we can register all the way from full vacuum up to around 32 pounds of boost. So anywhere between that, it can register on the sensor. If we want to run more boost than that, We'd have to upgrade to an Omni four bar map sensor. We're gonna cover that in a separate video. We're not gonna worry about that right now, but I do wanna point that out that it is different than the Evo 789s. Those had a one bar map sensor on the intake manifold. Let's pop open our math tables here. So we have three different math tables. Now, this is essentially one gigantic math table, but they've broken it down here in the software under three manageable tables. We're gonna find the mass airflow sensors from zero to five volts. So we can see between that, and that's gonna be our tables here. So this is gonna be working in order of voltage um, as we kind of go through the table. We only need to open up one of our map based tables here so we can talk about that. So this is a speed density table. This is going to be mass airflow. The difference here, mass airflow sensor is gonna be mounted on the intake pipe going into the turbo. That's gonna register how much airflow is coming into the engine. So based on how much airflow is coming into the engine, it'll have a voltage output It'll send that back in here, whatever the voltage is going to be. It's going to have a lookup in the table. This lookup value will be converted into airflow. Now, we call the, call the sensor a mass airflow sensor because we would talk about air mass. Now, in the very first video, we introduced the concept of mass, which is volume times density. So in that situation of registering the air, air flow coming into the engine here, we need to know the density portion. We're going to find that it has an intake air temp sensor in the actual mass airflow, mass airflow sensor itself. It'll register what the air temp's coming in. It'll also look at the barometric pressure. It'll calculate then the density, knowing the air temperature and the barrel pressure. And it's gonna combine it with what it's calculating here from the volume flow coming into the engine. Therefore, it'll know the air mass. Now, alternative to this, we have another set of calculations going on. That's our speed density calculations. This is going to be based on this table here, based on engine RPM and that's going to be based on the map pressure reading. So full engine vacuum here from negative 12.5 PSI all the way up here to approximately 30 PSI. So this whole table here is going to be used to estimate the air mass coming into the engine or airflow coming into the engine, I should say. It's still going to be taking a look at the, mat, the uh, intake air temperature. It's still going to be taking a look at the barrel pressure and it's going to combine that along with what it's estimating for airflow to have an estimated air mass. So this is going to be the difference of measuring the air mass or airflow coming into the engine, this is gonna be the difference of estimating what that's going to be. So it can, it's pretty good as far as estimation go and calculations go, um, but we'll have essentially a measurement versus an estimation or calculation as far as uh, these, these two tables here go. So when we're talking about um, uh, what the purpose here of, of registering um, the amount of air mass coming into the engine, 
we have an equation that underlines everything here in the ECU. It's fuel mass is equal to air mass divided by target air. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.